Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 6th of September. Jay Shankar says G20 summit to be defined by positions taken, not leaders' attendance. Pakistani family struggles to pay electricity bill that takes up entire paycheck. And Hindus in Nepal and India celebrate Jadmashtami. And now for all the details, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Wednesday said absence of Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russia's President Vladimir Putin from the G20 summit in New Delhi is not unusual as various leaders had skipped the summits in the past. In an interview to ANI, Jay Shankar said the absence of the two leaders will not affect the negotiations to produce a consensus communique as country's position will be reflected by whoever is the representative on that occasion. He added G20 is very much a collaborative forum and not the arena for power politics. Highlighting the expectations from the summit, he said G20 nations coming to Delhi will understand the responsibility that they bear and they cannot afford to fail the other 180 countries of the world that are looking to them to set directions. At different points of time in G20, you know, there have been some presidents or prime ministers who for whatever reason mm -hmm. have chosen not to come themselves. Uh, but, you know, that country and that country's position uh, is obviously reflected by whoever is the uh, representative uh, on on uh, that occasion. So, there is a lot of goodwill that we have and uh, and again uh, I, I stress to you I am confident that every one of the G20 coming to Delhi will understand the responsibility that they bear, will understand today that the other 180 countries of the world are looking to them to set directions uh, and that they cannot afford to fail them. India on Tuesday voiced concern over the working methods of the UNSC Sanction Committee, terming it a dent on the credibility of the UN Security Council. Speaking during the Council debate on working methods, Indian envoy to the UN, Ruchira Kamboj, said genuine evidence-based listing proposals for globally sanctioned terrorist bloc without giving any due justification is uncalled for, a veiled reference at China and Pakistan. She added such moves are smacks of trouble speak when it comes to Council's commitment in tackling the challenge of terrorism. The working methods of the United Nations Security Council sanctions committees continue to dent the credibility of the UN Security Council. For genuine, evidence-based listing proposals for globally sanctioned terrorists to be blocked without giving any due justification is uncalled for and smacks of doublespeak when it comes to the Council's commitment in tackling the challenge of terrorism. The working methods of sanction committees must emphasize transparency, objectivity in listing and delisting, and should not be based on political considerations. The Indian ambassador also stressed over expansion of permanent membership at the UNSC and said there is a need for Security Council that better reflects the geographical and developmental diversity of the United Nations. She said the refusal to give member state of the Global South a voice and role in Council's decision only lowers the Council's credibility. The reform measures by Pakistan government in view of the IMF bailout have taken a toll on the common public. People are struggling to pay inflated electricity bills, which in some cases are even more than their monthly paycheck. A report. 47-year-old silversmith Fahim Mohammed Naeem was one of the many hundreds across Pakistan who were protesting a sharp jump in their electricity bills recently due to higher tariffs and increased tax as the country faces brisk inflation after securing an IMF loan of $3 billion. Naeem says he cannot afford to pay the electricity bill, which came up to 24,532 rupees, as his monthly paycheck is only 30,000 rupees. 
The family had only been using two light bulbs and a ceiling fan very sparingly these days. But the bills keep soaring month after month. महंगाई इतनी हो गई है बाबा बहुत ज़्यादा परेशान रहने लगे हैं और बिल भी बहुत ज़्यादा आते हैं अब इस वजह से बाबा कहते हैं कि मैं तुम्हारी पढ़ाई अफोर्ड नहीं कर सकता हूँ तो अब मुझे डर है कि मेरी पढ़ाई ना इस वजह से छूट जाए Pakistan's inflation rate stayed above target at 27.4% in August while it is embarking on a tricky path to economic recovery. Naim's workplace is a tiny room where he sits with an apprentice repairing gold and silver jewelry. He said that although the 8-hour working time has been almost cut by half because of power outages, the power bill at his workshop has doubled. He fears losing his job now. अगर ऐसे ही मामला चलते रहे तो एक दिन हम हमें कारखाना बंद करना पड़ जाएगा मालिक को हमें नौकरी निकाल देंगे वो उजरत नहीं मिलेगी कुछ नहीं होगा तो हम कैसे कमाएंगे एस डी एस पाएंगे कि सारा वाइंड अप करना पड़ जाएगा हर चीज़ The UN World Food Program had to cut rations to another 2 million Afghans this month and is warning of a catastrophic winter if funding runs out with little food for remote communities in place. WFP country director said 3 million people are now getting food aid but after October they might be getting nothing. They need 1 billion dollar in funding to carry out their projects until March. For Kabul resident Baba Karim the cash he has got twice this year from the WFP was been a vital supplement to the less than 2 dollar a day he earns working or jobs. <laughs> Development assistance that for years from the backbone of government finances has been cut and current Taliban administration is subject to sanctions. Restrictions by the Taliban on women including stopping most female aid staff from working are an obstacle to formal recognition and have also put off the donors. Moving on, the Maldives is set to hold the crucial presidential election on September 9. The election comes at a time when incumbent president Ibrahim Mohamed Solis Maldivian Democratic Party has been fractured by a major split. Observers believe the outcome will have ramifications for geopolitics in the wider region. Solis who promotes close ties with his country's huge neighbor with an India first policy appears to be slightly ahead in the polls. The coalition backing this main rival Mohammad Muizu has a record of being close to China promising to remove a small Indian military presence in the region. India and China have both invested millions of dollars in infrastructure in the islands as they seek to build goodwill and influence. The office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights on Tuesday raised concern over reports of intimidation and harassment of human rights advocates and civil society leaders through legal proceedings in Bangladesh and called on authorities to create a safe environment for human rights defenders to continue their operations. In a statement, UN Rights Chief Spokesperson Ravina Shamdasani said legal harassment of civil society leaders like Nobel laureate Mohammad Yunus and other dissenting voices is a worrying sign for civic and democratic space in Bangladesh and such cases will represent important tests for the independence of the judiciary in Bangladesh. The UN body also voiced concern over the upcoming cyber security law and called on Bangladesh parliament to ensure that the new law is not used to suppress freedom of expression in the country. Devotees across India on Wednesday throng temples to celebrate the festival of Jatmashtami which marks the birth of Lord Krishna. They performed prayers, sang devotional songs and some of them also observed fast to mark the occasion. This year the festival will be celebrated for two consecutive days. According to Hindu belief Lord Krishna took birth to kill his maternal uncle Kans the demon king of Mathura city. Throughout the day we have special musical concerts bhajans kirtans and the, all the devotees who visit the temple will get to see the beautiful alankar of the lord hear the wonderful sankirtana witness the abhishek of the lord and also have krishna prasadam 
Meanwhile, serpentine queues spread across the Patan Darbar Square in Nepal as thousands of devotees thronged an ancient Krishna temple on the occasion. Lord Krishna is considered the eighth incarnation of Lord Vishnu, the god of protection. Some children and infants dressed up as Lord Krishna and his consort Radha were the main centre of attraction in the UNESCO World Heritage Site area. किना जन्माष्टमी दिन अब आज भोलि हाम्रो व्रत बस्ने भोलि नक्षत्रबाट अब आज चाहिँ नि मकै सकै उसिनेर खाइन्छ अनि खेरि पूजा आजा गरिन्छ बत्ती बालिन्छ अखण्ड बत्ती बालिरहिन्छ भगवानको लागि सारै नै प्राणै दिइन्छ भन्ने यति भनेर दैट्स ऑल इन टुनाइट्स एडिशन वी विल सी यू सेम टाइम टुमोरो गुड नाइट Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.